Okay, I just turned on the recorder, so we're on YouTube. Welcome to WP Tonic, episode 36. Today, Jonathan and I have Dustin Hartzler on. And Jonathan, what are we going to talk about today? Oh, well, we're going to talk, um, Dustin, about, you know, his past career, how he got into WordPress, um, how did he end up working for Automatic. And then we're going on, um, because Dustin did a, a lot of podcasts about page builders and about um, the comp- the dreaded competition in some way. And we're just going to have a good talk about Squarespace, Wix, we believe, maybe also Rainmaker, see if Dust- Dustin's got any thoughts about Rainmaker, and just have a, a broad sweep because his podcasts were better than mine, actually, or ours, Bill. So, oh, yeah, he's number one. He's the WordPress like, he's chart number one. He actually, he actually had the insights, Bill. I'm not sure about <laughs> my, I'm not sure about my insights, Bill. But I, I did my best last week, didn't I, Bill? Right, right, right. Yeah. Inch by inch to cinch. We'll get there someday. All right. So, Dustin, um, how did you get into the crazy world of WordPress? Wow, this takes me a journey back to like 2009 ish. I was a few years before that I learned how to build word or I learned how to build websites with Microsoft front page. Woohoo. Like that's how I got my start into websites. And I think the biggest challenge I was having when building websites was I was perfectly fine. Like um, figuring out the structure of building a website and making everything very easy for me to build it for it to expand. So like I could build all the, um, all the pages and menus and stuff that I knew that I would need. But it was the dynamicness of building menus that really got me hooked into WordPress because of the fact that, you know, you build this whole site, it's 100 pages, and then a client comes and it's like, oh, can you add one more menu item? We forgot one. And then to go back and have to edit all those files and stuff, it was a complete pain. And so when I figured out that you could do this with WordPress, and before, like when I first got started with WordPress, the custom menus weren't there like the drag and drop menus, but you still could dynamically create them, which was really, really nice. So that was super helpful. And that was probably how I got my start. Like that's how I got connected to WordPress and, and started using it because of the ease of building menus and adding new pages. So was you doing this as a full-time gig or was it, or was this a kind of part-time gig and you had a full-time job as well? Yeah, it was a part-time gig for a while. So I I graduated from college in 2007, and then I was a corporate engineer at WordPress or at, at Whirlpool. I'm not sure what happened to my camera there. It said the video uh, is turned off. That's interesting. Yeah, it's done the same with mine. We can still. Um, yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. We'll keep yeah. on driving on. All right, okay. drive it on. I, I hit the video button, so I'm back on. But. Um, oh. So I was a corporate engineer at Whirlpool and I was doing this kind of on the side and I was listening to a lot of other podcasts and like people were, were sharing about how they were making all this money online. They were having their own businesses and things like that. And I was like, well, I can totally do that. And so I worked for three and a half years as an engineer and kind of on the side, I was building um, websites for friends. Like I had a guy who was a, a friend of mine who ran for county commissioner and I built him a website and I built that with WordPress and it took me nine times longer than it should have because I was just learning WordPress. <laughs> but I experienced a lot of just great information and and learning by trying to figure this out with WordPress. And then from there, I just continued to get better and better at it. And eventually in 2010, I left my corporate gig and we moved to Dayton, Ohio, and then I started my own WordPress development business, and I still knew very, very little about WordPress. Yeah, that's a, so, wow. That's, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's an amazing story. Yeah, it's, it's I not, don't feel so bad, Jonathan. Well, it's not uncommon, actually. It's, um, you, get, you get some, I don't know if you agree with this, Dustin, it's a very diverse pathway. You, know, you, get, you get some people that come from a, um, the kind of... Um, book publishing design background you get others that come from a very traditional um computer science background and then you get people like a lot of people that have got a more kind of untraditional pathway into wordpress actually that's why one of the things i like about it dustin is that you meet a lot of really interesting people don't you mm-hmm. apart exactly. from this Apart from this English geezer. Yeah, I was going to say, I uh, met Jonathan. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure how interested I am. Um, you, you, are you going to refuse to laugh at my jokes, Dustin? Or are they not? Uh, 
I haven't uh, been funny enough yet. <laughs> <laughs> See, we, we laugh at that. That's ridiculous. Oh, uh, that's so English. It's inside um, humor. So uh, get on to automatic. So, um, you know, what's the good, you know, give us a couple of good things about working for automatic. Can you, if I dare you, dare you, can you name a couple of things that are not so great about working for automatic or are they going to sack you? Well, they, speaking to you. No, 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 they won't sack me for that. So I think I should continue on my journey just a little bit and explain that. So after working it as an engineer for three and a half years, and then I had my own business for three and a half years, and I built websites for people, mostly small businesses. Most of them were, I mean, I had a lot of people who were building a website as a personal brand. They wanted something up for their business, you know, whatever it was. And I was taking WordPress themes. I was purchasing them and customizing them and making them what they needed to be. And so after a few years of that, and of course I was doing my podcast all at the same time, um, when that happened, um, I really got into, I got really interested in answering people's questions about WordPress because they were so random and they were so like intriguing, like, oh, I don't know. I've never thought of that before, but I'm sure WordPress can do that. So then I would spend hours like digging into it and trying to figure it out. And like that became my joy, my passion for a while. And when somebody said, oh, you know, like I'd have a project for a $2,000 website. And it's like, I don't really even feel like doing that. Like I would rather just help people. And that's kind of when I was listening to another podcast and was talking to different, you know, I was talking to somebody that worked at Automatic and I was like, I should really check out this automatic thing. So I signed online. I looked at their work with us page and I was like, man, this sounds like the, a dream come true. This is like a perfect company for me, even though I vowed that I'd never work for anyone ever again. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it turned out I applied and it was quite a tedious process to get in. There was back and forth a few interviews. I had a small project to do. I had to work for six weeks under a contractor license um, to make sure that I was a good fit for the company and the company was a good fit for me. And then finally got hired on in December of 2013. So um, I just hit my 16 month milestone. I know that because um, one of the benefits of working at Automatic is every 16 months we get a brand new computer. Um, they just make sure that the computer is the most useful tool. I mean, it's what we use every single day. I mean, we clock eight to 10 hours every day on it. So we want to make sure that we've got the, the nicest machines so out there. What so, does automatic recommend for a computer? Um, you can purchase anything that you want, wow. but I would say 99% of the company is all Macs. We basically can go to the Mac store and screenshot what we'll put stuff in the cart that we need or what configuration that we want and then screenshot it and then they buy it through our corporate store. So I'm actually like I'm waiting for a computer right now. One is my wife's is coming today and then mine's coming tomorrow. So just happened that hers was at an upgrade time about the same time as I needed one. So I'm like, well, we'll just put, let's get new computers this week. So, so what'd you um, get? What kind of Mac? So I got the, right now I'm using a 15 inch MacBook Pro with retina screen. Mm -hmm. And I decided this time around, I'm going to go down to a 13 inch. Mm. Um, mainly because the most of the, I mean, I do 90, probably 95% of my work is all done with a, um, it's, it's all done connected to a Thunderbolt monitor. And so there's no real reason for me to have a, uh, it's no reason, like I don't really need a big screen. So I went with the, I pretty much configured one of the nicest 13 inch Macs that's out there, or it's, you know, I ramped up the RAM and maybe 512 hard drive or something, but you know, it's just kind of one of the middle midline Macs. So I'm, I'm going with the 13 inch. I really wanted to pull the trigger and get that new 12 book, 12 inch MacBook that just came out, but you can't use an external display with it and it doesn't have a very strong processor. So I yeah. I opted for maybe the next time around in sixteen months maybe I'll get that one. Which so, chip did you, which chip did you get? Get i seven uh, or i five? I think it's the i five. Okay, I okay. seven. Whatever. I mean, whatever the newest thing is. That I just got one of the newest ones that was just revamped. You know, right at that last MacBook. Sh um, shall we rename the episode the uh, <laughs> Mac Weekly Podcast? No. Bill? Yeah, no. something. Like you know, that. I'm going to yeah. ask Dustin. Hopefully, Dustin, I have the. Uh, podcast alley and i was going to invite you to be on it in mx uh my one interview i get it live at nmx so if we can make yeah. it we'll talk about your we bring your macbook right yeah, we'll so so get on to the good points what's get the good the point question. yeah i'm finally getting to the question part yeah. um so some of the benefits that i have at working at automatic is that the the job and the work is extremely flexible like, I mean, this is probably one of the main reasons that i wanted to try working at automatic because 
we have a one-year-old daughter now. We were expecting when I got when I got hired, and so I didn't want to have to try to be you know finding clients and then juggling client projects and you know doing all that type of thing. So like I can if I have to be up in the middle of the night with my daughter, like I can be up in the middle of the night, I can sleep in, and then I can work later in the afternoon or the evening. Like I just have a lot of flexibility in the work. Um, it's really fun to be able to work with people from all over the world. So I have my, my team is, there's a team of 12 of us, 13 of us, and we are, we're one of the few teams that everyone is located in North America. All but one is in the United States, one is in Canada, and we just span the four time zones in the U.S. There's other teams that have people over in Europe, they have them in Australia, um, in, uh, India, um, places like that. So that's one of the really cool parts as well. It's pretty neat to be able to get to know people on a kind of a personal level, even though we, we communicate almost exclusively via text. And so like I know today is one of my teammates' birthdays and he's taking off early for the day because it's his birthday and he's going to do whatever he wants on his birthday or whatever. But um, it's kind of fun just to know and get to know people that, that love helping WordPress users as well. All right, that's great. So, what's one of the draw? What's any kind of drawbacks come to your mind? Um, I think the draw. One of the drawbacks is that we can work anywhere at any time. Like, I get volunteered a lot to do things around here. Be, my wife volunteers me to do things because oh, Dustin, he can work just later. Like, he can be there to do that. He can volunteer in the middle of the day and just pick up and go. And so that's not really like a, a negative with the company per se, but it is. And I know there's other of my coworkers that have said the same thing. Because we have the flexibility, that means that people will, will count on us and ask us to do things during the day when necessarily like everybody else has to work. Um, so that's one one downfall, which isn't really a downfall. I mean, we pick the hours we want to work. We can, you know, choose wisely. You, you know, I like to work early in the morning. And then I normally have from 7 to, like today I had from 7 to 10 off um, taking care of my daughter. And then I had went and dropped her off at a babysitter's. And then I have to go pick her up here in a little bit. And so I, I worked a little in the morning. I worked some in the afternoon. I'm going to work later in the evening and record a podcast later. And, and so I get to do all of those things. Um, probably just another challenge is like we don't have, we don't have one-on-one -on -one communication a lot with people. Like we don't actually talk. Um, and this is actually, I mean, it works well for me. Like I'm okay with reading other people's messages via text, but I, you know, like sometimes you lose that sense of, okay, what are they really saying because they're communicating via text versus communicating via audio or video. And we do a lot of this just so it's documented. So if somebody's off for the week, they can come in and they can read the follow-up conversations and they can see what's going on. So I would say once we get to know each other a little bit better, then we can sense their tones. And we and, and actually like, honestly, when I'm reading people's text messages, like I'm reading them in their voice. Like I, I, you know, I've had enough conversations with them that I know, Hey, um, okay, this is Joel. And I know exactly what Joel sounds like and whatnot. So I think that's kind of cool too. Yeah. Um, kind of softball question here. Do you think the way the company's distributed makes it more difficult for somebody that had a disability to actually work for automatic? I would say no. Um, I think that the distributed force um, would help out tremendously just for the fact that you can work from home, you can work for wherever's convenient for you. Like if you, for example, um, need a screen reader or something like that's going to be something that automatic's going to cover the complete charge for, you know, whatever, like they'll give you the tools that you need to do your job. So I don't think it's a, it's a problem. All right. I just thought I'd throw that through. And um, a bit of a naughty question. If you work for Automatic, could you use the thesis framework? Um, <laughs> good question. If I knew how to use it, then yes, maybe. Yeah, I thought I'd just ask that. Uh, that was a bit cruel, actually, Dustin. But um, All right. uh, it's just my. It's just, so um, I think we'll get on to the other thing. Um, we're. You did an extensive piece about this particular subject, Dustin, and we're doing a month on it um, about um, about the dreaded competition. You know, uh, every time I talk about it, I have to wash myself, Dustin. But uh, Rob, but it is there, and um, so we're doing. Um, we're looking at the online competition. Um, and I know you you also did a series about it, and I also looked at Joomla and Drupal. I had done a little bit with Joomla a few years ago, 
but I I really think that compared to WordPress, they are both um, quite complicated. And I I think that was your conclusion about those two yourself. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So I would say that hands down, Joomla is the most complicated thing I've ever used. Like I wanted to give a full review of Joomla. And after like 30 minutes after installing it, like I couldn't figure out how to do anything. Like I created pages, but I couldn't get them to the menu. I created menu links, but I couldn't figure out how to like, I couldn't figure out how to do a single thing. And so I honestly just pretty much gave up and said, you know, don't even try. Like, I mean, <laughs> that was, that's honestly my opinion. I ended up doing, I think I did a series of eight of these episodes. So I did three self-hosted versions, which was uh, Dru Drupal, Joomla, and Magento. And then, so I did those three. And then there was five of the self-hosted ver or self that were hosted um, solutions that I used. And I think that, I mean, Joomla was the only one I couldn't do anything at all. Drupal, I really had a hard time changing the content like the the css and stuff like that that was just kind of a challenge to me yeah and it was the very first time that i learned how to use drupal anyways and so and i mean it's the same thing with wordpress like it was a complicated process to learn and figure out and now like five six seven years later of using it almost daily like you kind of understand and know what it can do and its limitations when you yeah. turn turn Drupal on for the first time, you're like, I don't know how this is. And they call things different, you know, modules or essentially plugins or extensions or plugins. You know, they all have different names for things, but yeah. essentially they do the same thing. Yeah, there's always a learning curve, but there's learning curves and there's learning curves, isn't there? Mm -hmm. um, my, ex I haven't got any real experience of Drupal. I have tried it out and um, I, I feel both are definitely um, not for the kind of small business owner in any shape or form. And I think with Word, obviously you've got WordPress org and you've got WordPress.com. And um, I'm a little bit slack on, but on WordPress.com, but um, I, I've just gone back to the website and there seems to be a lot of changes going on with WordPress.com. Um, so I'll be probably talk about that quickly, but I would like to get on to the kind of hosted solutions because you, you spent a lot of time looking at them. And last week we looked at Squarespace, Wix and Weebly and you looked at a number of, of of the group, what are your overall re, um, insights and reflections about them and some of their strengths and weaknesses? Sure. And I did this review back in November of 2014. So it's been a little while. So I'll see what I can remember. But I really liked how, and I can't remember which platform it is. Maybe I should pull up my notes so I can look at it. But a lot of these came with of the three, I believe most of them, when you signed up and you started with a new theme, they had default content there already. I think that's one of the, the limitations of WordPress. Like you go ahead and install and you have the about or you have the sample page and you have a comment and a and hello world post. But you don't have like I believe it was Wix. I want to say it was Wix when you signed up and you picked which type of theme that you wanted. So if it was a restaurant theme or a boutique theme or whatever it was, then it had like three or four pages already configured for you. And then you just went in and you added your phone number and your email address and then your content, your copy and stuff like that. And so I think that's where WordPress can, to, can make it a lot easier for people, especially like... Oh, I work for Automatic, which is the company behind WordPress.com, and we support WordPress.com users. And we get questions in every single day, and we dread them because they're so hard. But how do I configure my theme to make it look like the, um, like the example or the demo? And it's, I mean, it's ridiculously hard. Like I was actually doing a review yesterday. Of, there's a new platform out there called Branded.me. And it is a, um, it's one that you can build a personal branding site. So basically you can pull in, you can actually connect it with LinkedIn and it pulls in all your data from LinkedIn and your website's done in like two minutes. It was amazing. Like um, I spent some time tweaking that and customizing that. And I really liked that. And I had like two or three tabs open because I was in the, the branded.me dashboard and I was in the branded.me like front end, which you can edit right on the front end, which is super nice. 
And then I was trying to do the exact same thing on WordPress.com or, I mean, essentially I could have been doing it on self-hosted WordPress. It just happens that the site that I was building was on WordPress.com. And I had like four or five, six tabs open because I was like in a preview window and then I was looking at a live site and then I was on the dashboard for one thing and then I had the theme template open in another window so I could look at that to see how it was configured. Like, I mean, and I spent two hours yesterday and I wasn't even close to being done yet. And so it, it's just that I think that's probably one of the biggest things that we can take away for WordPress is how can we make themes that much easier to configure? And, and I mean, a user gets frustrated when they come and they install a theme and it looks nothing like the demo. And then when it takes them hours of hunting and figuring out and contacting support, like just to get it to look like the demo, like we, something needs to be done about that. Personally, that's what I think. Yeah, I understand that. You know, you know, it should look in some way like the demo. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. So, um, I approached. You know, obviously, uh, as a kind of quasar developer, and your 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 past background as a developer, um, I tried to place my mind as a just a small business owner, and um, basically. Um, I um, I found I thought Squarespace was going to be the easiest because in some ways I think it's the in some ways the best. Um, but I think if I was just an average person with just bare computer skills and I went to Squarespace, yeah, the designs are the best, but I actually found the process to be a bit confusing if I try to put myself into that mindset of Joe Blog, small business owner. If I was a marketer or a quasar developer or graphic designer, I'd probably be fine with it. Would you agree with that? That, yeah, it's got its great strength, Squarespace, but it... it but if you're that small business owner, it's probably not the best solution. What, what do you feel? Yeah, I think I can agree with that statement. I think that I felt that Wix was, I was the most impressed with Wix. Like I had no idea it was as, as good as it was. Like I think it does a really good job for, um, for making it easy because like you don't really have much of a dashboard. Like it's all on the front end and you're editing right on the front end and they have different views. So you can look at your website in mobile or via, you know, what it looks like in a tablet and things like that. And, but I do think that Squarespace can be used for, you know, somebody, an average business owner, but I think there's some, some customizations that need a developer's help. I kind of feel the same way about WordPress. Like, I think sometimes it's best to pay somebody to get your website set up, even with WordPress, and then just start, then like the, yeah. the developer gives them the keys and say, okay, this is how you use it and this is how you manage it. Because, you know, in, you know, is a business owner going to have to, you know, once they set their logo, like they're not going to have to do that ever again. And why should they waste their time trying to figure out how to get the logo in the right resolution and the right spacing and, you know, like all of those things that really is is a frustrating thing for users and, and business owners when they'll never have to do it again. And it really doesn't matter. Like they don't need to know how to do that once it's, um, once it's set up. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I totally agree again. And yeah, um, I, I thought I wasn't going to like Wix. I yeah, thought I didn't that, either. I thought this is going to, and then when it came up, I thought this looks, re this interface looks really cheesy and this is going to be awful. But actually, as soon as I started using it, the actual interface fun logic and the functionality logic of the application, it, it's actually easier to use than Squarespace, is it not? Mm -hmm. um, the only thing is I, I thought their library, um, their pricing structure is a dog's breath. You know, you've got dog's about... Breath. Yeah, you got about six choices, and you got a list of um, choices that are longer than my arm, Justin. I thought that was a little bit of a letdown. If you're not used to that kind of, you know, if you're really a newbie to that kind of um, pricing structure, and you you see six pricing structures, and you don't how how on earth are you going to make the right choice? And the other factor was that um, on the free which is fair enough and also on the lowest paid you do have to accept advertisement um and i'm not 
I was, a, you know, what kind of, you know, it's okay from WordPress.com because it's a, you know, I, I, I would totally trust um, Automatic, you know, for their sensibilities. But I'm not sure about a company like Wix, how, you know, what kind of advertisement you're going to get. Right. Um, but it's not that highly priced. So um, I thought we had some really if you're the small business, it is the one that I would lean to. But the only other factor is, I, I think, uh, I think in their library, I just want to see if you think the same. I don't think everything in their library is that greatly designed, and also, I don't think everything is totally responsive, is it? Uh, I don't know. I didn't look into that as super closely as I should have, probably. No, yeah, the I Wix, the Wix wasn't responsive. I, and- well, if I remember right, right? Yeah, their own site isn't responsive. Yeah, it was pretty actually. bad. It's yeah, pretty that, bad. which I find Squarespace bit, was, I think. Yeah, Squarespace. Um, what about? What, did you look at Weebly at all? I did. Um, I don't remember. Let me pull up Weebly so I can maybe refresh my memory. But also, also really we have about five minutes left, so we'll tying it all together in the last five minutes. I would like to hear what you guys are doing at New Media Exposition too. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so Weebly. I think I was. I think that I enjoyed Weebly's experience and I liked, I mean, I think it fit well. And I think I was kind of impressed with what it was. I kind of thought it was like a GoDaddy site builder, but it, in reality, like it does a pretty decent job if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, that it, they, they seem to offer an enormous amount of functionality, membership sites, e-commerce, but the other two do as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was something about it that, didn't work as well as Wix, um, and I I could only put it down to the actual functionality of the editing system. Mm-hmm. But there was something funny about it. Would you agree with that as well? Yeah, I would agree with that. It just wasn't. It didn't seem like it was nearly as polished. No, that's great. So um, I think we quickly. Um, so what about um, WordPress.com? Do you um, where do you think in the next year that you know, I'm not asking for any trade secrets or anything, but um, w- do you think WordPress.com are going to are looking at the other competition, and are they going to go take the best bits? What's your feelings? We are constantly looking at the competition and looking at those other platforms and kind of evaluating what they do well and what they don't do well. And and I mean, we're not copying in any way, shape, or form, but you know, there's always those design reviews where there's a handful of people in the room and just trying to figure out, okay, how can we make this the most easy for our users? And we're trying to like build it so they don't need support. Not that we're trying to get away from support, but you know, we want people to be able to figure out how to do it when by themselves. Like that's the ultimate goal. If, if we've designed it well, it should be able to be configured exactly how the user wants it without ever having to contact support. Yeah, it's a balance, isn't there? Um, especially if you're getting the same support tickets consistently, mm-hmm. that that's the sign that there's probably something fundamentally wrong with either the UX or something with the actual process, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And I suppose that you know that's where you have your meetings and your discussions, and you if you can see a clear um, um, pathway or um, that you know, that's what the resources has to be aimed at. So, do you think that? Well, you know, you already expressed you know, this. You know, you get a lot of inquiries. You know, we want it. We want this theme to look like the example. Is that something that you that you feel that automatic are going to actively look like? So they provide systems where people get uh, a theme that looks like the example. Um, I'm not sure where we're going with that, but I know that we want to make it better and easier for our users. Well, that's very diplomatic. I won't push you. <laughs> I'll push you. I won't push you anymore on that. Because so um, we also want to talk about the podcast expo that's coming up and our new media co-host. exposition. So off you go, Bill. Uh, no, no. Where, are you going to be on the broadcaster side or the NMX side? I will be in the NMXer side. Okay. Um, WordPress.com has a booth. And I've been there the last couple of years as speakers or as a speaker. And then this year I completely biffed when it came to the 
applying to be a speaker. And so I'm just going on behalf of WordPress.com. We've got a booth there. We'll be answering people's questions um, throughout the week. If you have any WordPress questions, um, and it doesn't have to be WordPress.com. It can be any WordPress question. If you have an error message, whatever it is, come find the huge WordPress.com booth. And there'll be me and I believe eight others that will be able to help out. And um, just we're giving our time and we're giving back to the community. It's going to be huge this year because it's connected in with the broadcasters. And they'll be wandering back and forth, and it'll be a good, good time. Hey, uh, you've got an open invitation. I've got one 30-minute uh, period of Podcasters Alley. It'd be good to have you on as a guest for Timelines of Success. Yeah, if that works out. I'm not sure exactly what my quote-unquote work schedule looks like while I'm there. Right. Um, but, you know, it'd but, be good It'd be good for your business, you know, good for uh, WordPress.com. Yeah, or for sure. So. Anyway, we'll see you there, Dustin, for sure, and uh, looking forward. Jonathan, good show, and we will show this. We'll shoot this up uh, late Saturday night, early Sunday morning, so it'll be on for the week of uh, NMX. Cool. Oh, thanks, Dustin. Um, I think it's given some insights to our user base because they must be looking at these alternatives. But um, just to finish, and I just want to see if you – the only thing apart from Squarespace, and I think I am correct about this, one of the problems, unlike – wordpress.com or wordpress.org apart from squarespace um you are kind of they had most of these systems have no export system yep. so if you you're if you you're locked in aren't you yep. you're, lo- you're locked in big ways um yep. uh, if you use those platforms and you blog for two years every day for two years and got 100 plus blog posts on there you've got to manually copy them and paste them out of there yes um, I, I just I thought I'd just end our interview with that slight um, <laughs> warning. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Very good. Uh, thanks thanks for coming on, Dustin. Thanks right. for having me. I appreciate it. See you later. 32 minutes. Yeah, it's, my it's, computer. I think they spy on people, don't they? They've, sure. just got, they've just got uncanny ability to... When I, when I saw this one was coming by USPS, I'm like, ah. Oh, Man. Oh, they're, they're the worst, aren't they? They, I mean, my UPS man is here between two and three every day. Like, I can it, just count on it. Like, yeah, is, I he don't, as, if, is he as grumpy as the one that I get? The UPS man, no. I used to have, I used to have a guy. So this is a funny story. A few years ago, I bought an iMac, and it was my first big purchase for my business. And I had a meeting from like right around the time that the UPS man was supposed to be here. He's supposed to come at three o'clock. And I had a meeting without thinking of it from like 1.30 to 2.30. And it was going to take me 20 minutes to get home. And I wrote a note and placed it on my door. And I said, dear Mr. UPS man, I will be home by 3 o'clock. I'm expecting to get my brand new shiny computer day and get it set up. Um, see you, I hope to see you soon or something like that. And he came and put one of those stickers on the door at, I think I got home at like 2.59. And he was here at 2.53. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I was so pumped. Um, I, le- I left the garage door open and I left my front door open. And pretty soon <laughs> yeah. I sat at the kitchen t- or I sat here in the dining room. I was looking out the door, the window all day. Anytime I heard a loud noise, like it could have been a truck or a bus. Like I was looking, is it pretty soon he came back and he said that he ended up, he went down our street and then he went back to the back of our neighborhood. And then he, when he drove out of our neighborhood, he looked and I still wasn't home yet because he was going to stop and bring it to me then because he saw the slip was still on the door and then he did all the rest of his route. And before he went home, he stopped by and gave it to me. Oh, that's he's nice. Like, yeah, he's like, oh, I they, don't, they don't do that here. Not in right. Reno. Not in the outskirts of Reno. You, you know, you, they come. That's nice. You know, whatever message you leave, they, they, don't, they take absolute no notice of he it at all. He didn't want to have to unload and reload the 41 pound iMac <laughs> at the end of the day and then load it back up tomorrow. So. Um, so I was glad. I was like so happy that that happened that day. So of course that won't happen today. Like I'll have to get my wife's computer tomorrow and mine com- tomorrow as well and get them all configured this weekend. So well, gotta get it, gotta get it ready so I can go to Vegas. Oh, you can take sure. it with you. I'm planning on it yeah, as long that. as I can get the there's some special like software to get proxied and different things that I need to get set up. And if I can get that done tomorrow when the IT guys are in town or in, you know, in front of their computers, yeah. as long as I can get that set up, I can, be, I can come without having Photoshop installed and some of the other things. Like as long as I have a web browser and a code editor and my proxy set up, I'm pretty much set. 
Oh, the one thing I forgot to ask you, um, it's too late now. What what do you make of uh, Rainmaker and what old Alan You know, Clark? I can record. Let me record the question. All right. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, what do you think of um, Rainmaker and what Alan Clark and uh, Studio Press Crowd are doing? You know, what do you think they're up to? Yeah, so Rainmaker is interesting. So I did this as part of my review as well. And... I had no idea what Rainmaker was. I just heard some name, like people throwing the name around, and I'm like, oh, I'll give it a try. You know, I'm trying these other ones out. They have a free trial. Let's go ahead and try it out. So I signed up, and I was like, this looks a lot like WordPress, but it wasn't. You know, it was Rainmaker. And, like, I kept doing things. I was like, these buttons look like WordPress. Is this a knockoff? Like, what's going on here? Is somebody punking me? Like, I didn't know what was going on. And then I, like, then I was on, I don't know, I was in the dashboard maybe, and I did a, a command option U to pull up the source code. And I saw WP-admin and I was like, what? And then I did a little bit more research and then I realized what, I mean, it's a managed WordPress solution that has e-commerce and membership and you know the store stuff built in. And then you just don't have to worry about it. So it's a little pricey at $99 per month, yes. but it gives you everything that if you're a business owner and you don't want to have to try to configure this widget or this plugin with this plugin to get it to you know work perfectly. Like, I think it's a, I mean, it's a good deal. I mean, it does what it needs to, and they just put their own custom interface on top of WordPress. And so, I mean, I, I played with it for a few hours. Like that's all I used it for, but once I realized, I think the big thing was once I realized it was running WordPress, essentially, like it was a managed WordPress solution, like then I was a little bit more comfortable with it. At first I was like, dude, they just ripped WordPress off. How is this even possible? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. So, but I don't know, like, I think it's, I think it's a good platform for certain people. You know, if you've got a highly trafficked site that you need a pretty powerful server um, and you don't want to deal with the configuration, you don't want to deal with setting up a shopping cart and, you know, managing updates and all that kind of stuff. Like, I think it does a good job. Like, I mean, you, pay, you pay a price, you know, if you're a business owner, you don't want to deal with any of that at a hundred bucks a month, you know, it probably doesn't matter to you. You know, if, if you're spending, you know, if you're spending $3 a month on a shared hosting plan and you're always having to update your plugins and you, your site goes down and you lose sales, like that's not good for anyone. So. Yeah. I, um, I actually think, um, I might be totally wrong here. You know, I've got no evidence for this at all, Dustin, but I actually think Alan Clark and his crew, um, are actually might be going a different direction with this actually. Um, I think his ambition is much larger than we realise. Um, he, I feel he's attempting to integrate this into hosting, design, and also a platform that offers services to like Salesforce.com mm -hmm. and a number of other um, customer relations systems where you actually can see who's coming to the site um, where they came from and Rainmaker provides analytical information about the visitor, where they come, who they are, how long they spent in much more detail than what you would get from Google Analytics mm -hmm. and also offer um, a customer relation back end where you're sending automatic emails to these people. I think his ambition is to you uh, is to build a hosted platform that has strong Salesforce customer relation management functionality built into it. Mm -hmm. And I might be totally wrong with that, but that's um, I've never met Brian, but I um, listen to a lot. I think uh, he has um, his insights and his business savvy. I think he's one of the brightest people in the WordPress community. He, let's put it this way. He chooses his partners really well, doesn't he? Sure. Absolutely. So what do you think of my thoughts there? Do you think I'm totally off off the grid there? Or? Uh, I didn't think of it that way, but I can. See I think of that way all the time. Yeah, it could be a logical explanation for for what they're putting together. We'll have yeah. to wait and see. Off the grid. Yeah, that, that's what I, I thought. Why are you doing this, actually? Um, but I understand. But then I think, yeah, I think you're more going down that route, actually. But I might be totally wrong. Well, 
who knows? I'm wrong about everything. So don't you, the last thing you want to do is listen to anything you, I've got. You to know, say. Justin. Hey, uh, one quick uh, question, Jonathan, that we didn't really ask Justin. What do you think the future of WordPress is? And I'll probably, if you do that interview next week on timelines, we'll ask that question. Um. So I think um, WordPress is going to continue to have small iterations each a major release. Like a lot now, all those little iterations are doing right now. Yeah, which are some of them are amazing. Like it's like, wow, this is so much nicer with just these little yeah. subtle things. Yeah. But um, I think we're going to continue to release three major versions per year with small little updates in between to get those security holes fixed. And we're just going to keep trying to make it the easiest user interface that we can. Like there's so many good ideas that people have that they're working on plugins for, and then they're going to develop for plugins. And then once those plugins work well, then they'll merge them into core. And I think that's kind of a good way to do it and let people really work on and develop certain features. And then those features can be really hacked on and tested. And if they're not ready for version 4.2, then they can be wait till 4.3. I think some of the big problems we had before was trying to merge everything at one time early on. And then, oh crap, that's not going to be done in time. So we either have to delay the release or we have to try to cut it out and it just didn't work that way. So I'm excited to see the the team leads. I know Konstantin Oberlin was, I think, named for 4.3. And there was somebody that they named for 4.4 already. So it's exciting to see. Um, he's an automatician, Konstantin is. And so excited to see what he'll do as as lead and and see where it goes. Yeah, I think also the strength is the soft strengths the i know it's kind of, might be over emphasized but actually I, I think as as a community it's got some of the more the most interesting people i've ever met actually um and also as a business platform i think as as business um people doing new things in the business environment it's got some of the more some of the some of the most interesting people in business are doing things with wordpress aren't they yeah. And I think too, it's really cool that like, I mean, Squarespace rolls out new features and Wix rolls out new features, but they're rolling features out that their internal product teams can figure out and build and design. Whereas with WordPress, we've got millions of people who mm -hmm. use WordPress and we've got thousands of people who help to contribute to core and build things and test things and, you know, build crazy, awesome plugins. And so I think that's where WordPress is really going to win because we have so many people with so many different strengths that are contributing. And even like WordPress.com, like we merge all of the, so like 4.2 is coming out soon and all of the code that's going to go into 4.2 will be rolled into WordPress.com about a week before um, usually is what, when they do it. And then that way we have a, you know, a few million people viewing that code and we see if there's any problems or whatnot, and then it can be fixed before 4.2 is actually shipped. Um, so I think we got we got a real win there because we have a very large user base, and people will find those bugs and you know complain about them, and we get them fixed and patched and out the door. I was going to mention that in your show. That open source approach is the reason why I don't even look at these other platforms. I just look at WordPress. Mm -hmm. In fact, yep. as a business, small business guy, I don't have enough bandwidth to look at these other things. I know WordPress is going to work. And one thing you mentioned too, which I think I'm going this direction is it's very important. Help that business person, that podcaster, I've got politicians and realtors, help them get that initial site up. And then in seven years from now, they'll actually feel very comfortable with WordPress just by being around it. Mm -hmm. And they're going to learn. And I am, I put uh, WP 101 in the backside of my, inside my panel. My, okay. But yeah, but it's a it's a it's an interesting thing because you got all you know you, you got it um, you even got it in the WordPress community, haven't you? Because you got Happy Tables, haven't you? And you got a couple others that are offering Pacific WordPress kind of hosted solutions at particular industry verticals, haven't you? And Happy mm -hmm. Table is one that comes to mind, Dustin. And then you got a load of of like what bills like for the real estate for other industries you've got these hosted private solutions where they add value by adding a lot of additional value but you also they keep you in in the system because it's practically impossible to get out of their gated um mm -hmm. solution so it seems to be going all over the place doesn't it mm -hmm. that's the interesting thing have you noticed that dustin yeah it's crazy. There's there's so many things to keep up with that I just can't keep up with them all. Uh, well, <laughs> that's the other thing is how do you decide what you know? That's a good question. How do you decide 
where you're going to focus at WordPress. Like I've decided to focus on using uh, Genesis, mm-hmm. and I specifically dynamic. Right. If you focus on Genesis, that's the only thing you work on, then you, you're going to be an expert in that. And you can build a theme, you know, very, very quickly by using Genesis. But if you are jumping around from this theme for us theme to elegant themes to woo themes, like yeah. it's going to it's going to take you four times longer to learn. Like that was the first thing. Like I would build themes from theme for I would buy one and then it would take me like an hour or two to figure out how they work. Yep. And then, you know, because they're all different. I mean, you can't really standardize something like that. When you can add those, when those, when those developers add that WYSIWYG stuff in the back end to change colors and font sizes and all that good stuff. Hey, what, and, and this is my last question to bother you, but Jetpack, I, I've always been intrigued with Jetpack. I have mm-hmm. it on one site. I play with it. I cut two sites. But is there a, a place where you could just like put Jetpack in with Dynamic and call it a day? I do it on one of my cheap sites. It's a, this cheap organization. What do you mean by put it in with Dynamic? I use Jetpack for like on this one nonprofit site. I mm-hmm. use it for almost a lot of its applications. It just it just works, you know. It, it uh-huh. seems like you could just be Jetpack and Dynamic hooked in to each other. I use I, I use uh you know Genesis with Dynamic and then Jetpack on that side. Oh, okay. So Dynamic's the theme. Yeah, Dynamic. If you want to call it the giant Dynamic is like. The child theme. It's or a whatever. child theme, but then they have uh, skins on top of that, of course. Oh, uh, okay. It's okay. A, and it has CSS. Dynamic um, allows you to. Um, it's yeah, a pay, can, web page builder for Genesis. Yeah. Can I okay. put the, can I add my bit here, Dustin, just to get your response? My problem. I'm fine. I, I was a bit resistant about going down the Genesis route, not because, but I'm. I, I think Studio Press a very respectable theme shop. Um, but I have decided to go down that route because for the factors that you've just outlined. But when it comes to Dynamic, um, I understand because they they produce this really great Dynamic editor, and um, I do understand why it's become popular, but it's also got the element of the taste of um, Chris Pearson and this whole going going down the road of ending up with your own because what they're doing is you've got this dynamic editor and they've got their own skin so you're putting another layer upon a layer upon a layer so you're ending up with almost four layers you've got wordpress you've got Gen- you've got genesis and then you've got the dynamic and, the skins. and then you've got their editor so you're ending skins. up literally with four layers and that's right. when I think you're pushing it a bit far then. What's your feelings about that statement? Yeah, I think so. Like, I don't know, like I've never really done the speed test analysis to see if adding all those things on top of things, you know, will slow down a site. I know it slows the back end down some, which drives me bonkers. Like when, it's, <laughs> when it, you know, when you make an update and then it takes 30 seconds, once you click the update button for it actually to come back and you know that the page is uploaded. Um, so I try my best to not use those. Like, um, I recently redid my site and I did it all like hand coded, like I hand coded the, the WordPress theme because of the fact that I wanted to make my backend super fast. Like that was one of the things that was just important to me, um, just cause I'm impatient and I would rather take the time and I really wanted to work on it as well. There's still, um, a, you know, a few dozen action items that I still need to do before my site's completely done. But, you know, I made it as simple as I could so the back end would load as quickly as I could. Yeah, so, and I, I totally agree with you. I know you said you took you took um, the, a commercial HTML theme as your starter and you just, yep. you just went. And I think that's a good, good. Um, but I am looking at Genesis, but I, I, um, I've got nothing. I think uh, Dynamic are a great company, but I, I think when you when you got four fundamental elements to something it, it it's starting um you're starting to get to the thesis um land and i've got nothing against chris pearson at all um but um i think there is a boundary and it, it's just uh, i'm a little bit concerned when you go that far um i think the genesis boundary you know, it keeps to the core. You have a framework and you have child themes and you do your customization on the child theme and that fits into the core recommendations of WordPress. The core, And mm-hmm. I think you're on safe land there, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not going to reply. All right. Yeah. <laughs> We're very finishing up here. 
Right, and thanks so much, Dusty. No, I, I, think I might take some of this content and throw it on after the show. You say yep. a little, little chit chat after the show is worth listening to. Dustin, uh, brilliant. I look forward to seeing you at New Media Exposition. Yeah, come oh. find me. Yeah, yeah, I saw. Yeah, I was there last year. Okay. I uh, Blueberry upgraded me to uh, a, a VP packet. Yeah. They just. I was the one selected guy. So cool. Kind of nice. nice. I just want to say, Dustin, you know, your contribution to the live show was fantastic. And I thought we've had a great chat today. And in the yeah. coming months, whenever you're back on the live show, because I really enjoyed your contribution. And um, we think it's been fantastic. And thanks for all the stuff you've produced over the years. Um, I've awesome. learned a lot from it. And I do appreciate your efforts. Sure. It's very good. Right. What I do. Website. <laughs> all right. Thanks. I'm going to. I'll hang oh. up now. All right. See you later. Jonathan, do you want to All stay right. on for a second? Yeah, I'll, sure. I'll call you back. Yeah, sure. Let me just, right. I'm going to shut off this.